Chapters um, Old Age Memoir, you know, set for a dawn and his recollection of his activism in the 1970s towards the repatriation of Rio Loco, which was in the early 20th century looted from the Ife Palace. And there was at that initial stage an intercolonial war over the artifact because it was looted by a German archaeologist and then the, the British colonial government got to know about it and they struggled over it over the border and eventually the British colonial empire overpowered the German colonial authorities and then it made its way to the British Museum. But we should not forget, Oriolopo, though not a human being, is a symbolism of the Yoruba was looted in the early 20th century from the Ife Palace and then what happened thereafter? The British government kept the original way and then authorized the mechanical reproduction, the mechanical reproduction of other copies all over the place, including the one that serves as the crest of the Obafemi Awolo University and Shonika says every time he sees that one at the, uni at the then um, University of Ife it only creates anger about an imposter being presented as the original and, and then that sort of connection that sort of feeling towards a valued object becomes another way by which Shulinka has engaged over the years the question of social justice. The social justice is not only about human beings but also about the repatriation of artifacts. This perspective for me is very important at this material time that we keep on talking about the imperative of repatriation when, because of the imperative of reparative justice and every now and then you find negotiations going on with the German government with the British government and other colonial capitals for the return of these valued artifacts by showing us his level of commitment Shunka creates a, a, um, an ambience of understanding which emphasizes the level of devaluation. And so that section in itself, about the attempt to reclaim Oriolopo, is, is titled Oriolopo and Oloricoco. Now, we all know Oriolopo. Who is Olorikoko. He says he himself is Olorikoko because he has chosen to also um, 
you know, dying with another American company who was the then head of state of that same job, that everybody wouldn't want to have anything to do with the then uh, military head of state. But because we're talking about Obi Wan and Obas, uh, 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 was able to trace as it his terminology and linking it back to Oloko because Oloko was Obiwa's consort. He, being a Yoruba man, is a descendant of Oloko. How then can Obi Oloko be looted and kept away in the British Museum? But it won't be on that because eventually information came that oh the original one was found in Brazil and Shonka took off with Onadi Yai, go to Brazil, did everything they could do to pick it up only for them upon getting home to realize that it's a fake one, another fake, which Another fakery that Shonka has put in Kondoni. They went, they went first to uh, Senegal and they confirmed when they finally saw BM on it, British Museum, as another fake. But because of the necessity of reconciling with this sacred object, Shonka returns to Nigeria, travels to the British Embassy, uh, British Museum again, um, to finally see the original. And then, for the moment, there was that reconciliation. And shortly thereafter, instruction came from the head office of the British Museum that Oriyoko should be permanently removed from circulation, the original. Now, there is no permanence, as I argue in my theory, to the search for a valued object or for loved ones. So, and that is the grand irony in the whole discourse of migration. When loved ones migrate, they leave a certain level of grief in those they leave behind. When there is no reconciliation, that same condition propels, ironically, those left behind to go into other journeys, which explains why um, grandmothers these days look for the alibi of Omugo. Um, and you also find grandfathers to try to do that. What are they trying to do? They are trying to reconcile. They are trying to heal their grief. But in this um, presentation of mine, as you are heard of, um, I am drawing, I have tried to draw our attention to the fact that there are times that we begin to engage in other such journeys, not because we are seeking reconciliation with our loved ones who have traveled, but because there are certain objects, sacred objects, to which we bear witnesses, and wherever they are, we continue the search. Shoyinka makes it clear that before him, in the 1970s, some other people in Yoruba land had sought to reclaim the local, they didn't succeed. He did not succeed in the 1970s, ladies and gentlemen. The challenge before all of us and the younger generations is that Oriyoloko is still stuck away in the British Museum. This quest for justice, reparative justice that Shoruba participated in in the 1970s. Who and what generation will bring Oriyoloko back to your rebellion. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you.